C-marking is mandatory for a wide range of products that may be imported or, or manufactured in the European Union. This includes electronics, medical devices, PPE, toys, and so on. I think all in those like 28 to 29 different directives and, and regulation that uh, have some sort of C-marking requirement. As you, you may know, these directives and regulations also tend to require a declaration of conformity, the self-issued document. You may need to invo involve a notified body. There's other than the C mark also various other traceability labeling requirements and so on and so forth. But what you may not be aware of is that you also need to create something called a well technical documentation or technical file. It essentially tends to refer to, to the same thing and it's it's often overlooked actually and, and, and misunderstood. So let's begin by looking at the I have to take up my phone because otherwise I can't remember all the items. Let's see what they are writing on the European Union website uh, when it comes to technical documentation requirements. So I'm just going to get this page open here. Technical documentation. Let me see. I, I should have brought it up before the video, but can't think about everything, I guess. All right. Here we go. So. The page is titled Technical Documentation and EU Declaration of uh, Conformity. And the items that it mentions is A, your name and address or those of any authorized representative, a brief description of the product, identification of the product, including serial number, model number, and so on. What else do we have? The name and addresses of the facilities involved in the design and manufacture of the product. This actually goes beyond what you would normally put on a declaration of conformity, for example. All right, what else have we got? The name and address of any notified body involved in the process. Although I assume that would be specified in the EC examination certificate. Still, it's apparently required. A statement of the conformity assessment procedure that has been followed. And this is, um, perhaps particularly relevant when it comes to, say, the PP regulation or the medical devices um, regulation in which you have different modules depending on the, sorry, the, the category of the product, uh, some of which require the involvement of a notified body and some which, which don't. So that's another item that you would need um, in, in these situations. You also need to include the declaration of conformity label and instructions of use. So as part of the technical uh, documentation, you need to include the the label, right? So this would be say the artwork, the, the packaging artwork, where you should, if you follow these regulations and directives, you'd have of course the C mark, but you should also have the traceability, uh, the traceability label where you have information about your company, where you have information about say, well, the product name, the model, the serial number and so on, right? So this should be visually identifiable uh, through the, 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 the artwork, for example. You, you, you should also have some sort of like label file that is uh, attached to the product itself so these are examples of things that you could could use to to uh, comply with that requirement and then they also mention instructions of use and and that's another thing that's very often overlooked by importers and manufacturers that uh, CE marking directives if I can call them that uh, I think all of them have except for ROHS perhaps have some sort of provision uh, concerning user instructions and and this should not just be in a technical file of course but it should should be something that accompanies the product uh, um, and I, I think I think uh, it needs to be sort of printed and, and placed in, in 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 the packaging I think that's that's what what is required I haven't read anything that they accept uh, say a QR code or a digital version or anything like that could vary in different countries though but in any case you need to include uh, instructions of use yeah sorry for <laughs> i keep looking on my phone but I can't, I can't reasonably remember all this right okay then another thing you need is a statement on the relevant regulation regulations could be more than one right to which the product is uh, compliant again this is something that should also be included in the declaration of conformity but perhaps that would you know could go beyond that um, I don't know, maybe a statement concerning the reach regulation or something like that could also be included. All right, what else do we have? Identification of technical standards uh, with which compliance is claimed. Again, that's something that should already exist 
in uh, the declaration of uh, conformity but uh, for some reason they want this to be also specified in the technical file despite the fact that the DOC is already supposed to be there. Another thing you need is a list of parts. So this could be a bill of materials. I also know that many brands they are including they are including um, CAD files, technical drawings, everything that goes into a product specification also goes into the technical file or the technical documentation. And the last item on this list is test results. So this would be lab test reports issued by a third party testing company, um, which essentially is required. They don't mention third party test results, um, but unless you have, unless you have uh, the, cap the capabilities, meaning the expertise and equipment to conduct testing according to harmonized standards, then, then in practice you would need to go to a third party testing company. I don't really see uh, any other way. Okay, but you, you can't just prepare the documentation and, 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 and claim compliance based on no test. You need to be able to show that there's been some sort of um, some sort of uh, compliance procedure that verifies compliance with the harmonized standards. So you could say that the technical documentation is really the it's, it's a summary of everything, right? You got the packaging, artwork, the user instructions, all the label files, test reports, the DOC. Um, did I mention user instructions? Bill of materials, so it's really a com it is a complete product specification in 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 that sense. Um, that's that's really what the the technical documentation uh, is is all about, and it is required. Something I want to mention. There's two things I would like to to also mention, uh, and and one is some challenges you could face if you are importing a product from say a supply in China. And well, what the director's regulation states is that you should then request the technical documentation. But I can tell you from experience that that's not really what's happening in reality. It's extremely difficult to convince any supplier, not just in China, but could be if you're importing something from the US or well anywhere outside the EU to provide technical documentation. And, and the reason is that that's really core IP, you know. Which company would be willingly just give away bill of materials, CAD files, source code, all of that? Few companies would. So, in in reality, it's 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 I would say almost unheard of that you can come in as an importer and and say, okay, we need test reports, we need the DOC, and yeah, by the way, we also need all your core IP through the technical file, technical documentation. And this assumes that they have this to begin with, which is also extremely rare. Well, they may have it, but not collected as a single technical, doc well, a single technical file, right? And also very unlikely that they have all the label files to, to be, well, ready and compliant uh, with, with EU regulations. Many importers in the EU, they assume that, well, um, they should have this, right? Because we're the buyer and we should be able to demand whatever we want. But yeah, may maybe maybe in, in an ideal world it would be the case, but that's just not how reality works. It's, it's extremely unlikely that you will find this. And what I see many, many importers do, especially the more, well, the less experienced ones is that they keep jumping from one supply. They keep sending out inquiries all over Alibaba, global sources, um, expecting to eventually find a supply that can actually provide all this. But I think, you know, it's, uh, the chances of that succeeding is, is ext extremely slim, extremely slim. So what is usually done in, well, in reality, um, when it comes to private label products, it, it really comes down to reverse engineering it and, and really rebuilding a technical file, well, the technical documentation based on, uh, say, product samples or, or anything like that. I think, I think that's, you know, really the only way to, to actually create technical documentation when you are importing products that you haven't designed yourself. Then if, if you are importing or having a custom design product manufactured elsewhere, then obviously you can't expect your supplier, in that case a contract manufacturer, to create the technical documentation for you. Um, but then it really comes down on you and that should be obvious, but uh, I, I still want to mention that. So in any case, don't expect any supplier to, to, to help you provide, well, to create uh, technical documentation for you, um, even if that's written in, in the directives, at least when it comes to import obligations, that's just not realistic. Another thing um, I would also like to, to bring up as I'm uh, recording this uh, video is um, the way that 
let's say, market surveillance authorities are looking at the technical documentation. I can tell from experience that um, market surveillance authorities are primarily, primarily looking at two things, and they are looking primarily at the declaration of conformity and the test report. This is how they primarily do compliance checks. And that's also what we see with, say, Amazon and so on. So what I'm getting to is that it's, 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 it's rare. It's rare that a that the market surveillance authorities in an uh, EU member state will actually require that you share the technical documentation. And I uh, had a discussion a few years ago with a, uh, mo- well, a representative of a market surveillance authority in Sweden, where I come from, and and she told me that they are primarily looking at the, at the declaration of conformity and it and, and and a test report because if they request technical documentation then this goes sort of in the public domain it it, it needs to be like a public record of sorts i don't know the details actually but that's what she told me and uh, my understanding is that um it is sensitive from from an ip point of view and, and for that reason they yeah they refrain from 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 doing so i don't know if that is standard practice or if it is apply, applies in in other uh, european union uh, member states but uh, member states but that, that is that is one reason that that was mentioned uh, back then anyway and i can also imagine that you they would only need a technical file if something very serious happens and when it comes to say recalls or compliance issues if a importer or manufacturer can provide a test report and a declaration of conformity there's no point in them to, to dig deeper because they, they can just you know they can get the products off the market based on based on these two uh, well the lack of these two documents uh, anyway right so they i think when it comes to recalls and, and other compliance issues those companies they they don't really get beyond that stage anyway so i guess it's really rare it's, it's fairly rare anyway that they would even have a reason to request technical documentation but that's just speculation from my side okay that's been 12 minutes of me discussing technical documentation if you have questions you can write a comment on our website just scroll down to the bottom you can do the same if you're watching this on youtube and you can of course subscribe if you want more videos from compliance gate bye for now